So in a previous web dev tip, we looked at how to set up a Netlify function using JavaScript just to return a bit of JSON to use in your apps. In this web dev tip, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it with TypeScript. So on the screen at the moment, we've got the previous function that we set up and it's just returning this uh, bit of JSON here. And literally all we need to do to get this to work with TypeScript, because Netlify will support this out of the box, is just to go and find our function file in our folder here and then just literally rename it to .ts. So we've now got our TypeScript file and any TypeScript we write in there will be converted to JavaScript before it's run in the Netlify environment. So obviously we've got a few problems here at the moment and we do need to restart the Netlify dev server. And what we'll do is we'll just stop that from running in our terminal here and we'll restart the server. But before we do that, we're just going to install a Netlify package to give us all of the TypeScript types uh, for our Netlify function. So let's just install that here. So it's npm install and at Netlify is the package. And the specific one we're after is functions. So if we just install that here, Okay, and once that's installed, we've now got a, a package in our project that has the Netlify uh, types that we can then use in our function. So the, the first thing we need to do here is just to get rid of this export statement here. So we'll define a new const of handler and then just export it using the TypeScript export syntax uh, to export things here. And if we then actually rerun the Netlify server, uh, so it's just Netlify dev to get us up and running again. When that reloads, uh, we should just find the functions port here. Just grab that and replace that in our URL currently in the browser. You can see our function works exactly like it did before, except now it's running in TypeScript. So we've now got our function running in TypeScript, but obviously a lot of the point of TypeScript is to have type safety by using types for certain variables and return statements, etc., for your apps. So let's import some of the Netlify types uh, to ensure that we're doing things correctly here. So there is a handler type. So if we just type this uh, function that we're creating here as a handler, that will just ensure that we're returning the right details from here. Uh, so for example, if we remove the status code from the return statement, you can see we in immediately get an error on the handler uh, saying that it doesn't match the type that it's expecting to come back. So that will catch any errors if we put in the wrong uh, object to return. So for example, something I always do is put status instead of status code. Uh, and obviously we've got our autocomplete in uh, v Visual Studio Code uh, to tell us about any problems. Another two things that you might want to import as well is the event type and also the context type. And they're actually uh, under handler event and handler context. So if we import those two there, and then we can type the event object as it comes in, and then type in the context if you're using that too. Just reformat the file there. And you can see here where we're getting the query string parameters from the event that that's valid. And if we just have a look at the autocomplete here on the event object, you can see all of the other properties that should be available to us, including the body, the headers, and different bits of information like that if you need to make use of them in your function. So those are probably the main things that you want to import from the Netlify functions package, the handler type and the event and context types, just to ensure that you're using the data inside of the function correctly and also that you're returning the right type of object from the handler itself. So that's pretty much it. That's how you create TypeScript functions with Netlify. Stay tuned for more web dev tips.